guys, it's Fridia and Little Everest here, and today's video is not about scaring you about labor and delivery and all that stuff. It's actually just little things, or they could be big things, that I wish people had told me would happen. Um, so I wanted to share it with you guys first. Number one, your belly won't go down on the second day. I thought that my pregnant belly would go down right after I had Little Everest. Oh, was I wrong. I don't know why I thought that. For some reason, I just thought of my stomach as a balloon, and then after we empty it, that it will kind of, you know, go down with it. But it doesn't, and it takes a while for your belly to actually go back to its normal size. And even when it's its normal size, you still have to, you know, go with the whole line down the stomach, you have to massage your belly, you have to put creams on it. Anyways, that's another video. The whole thing is I just thought it would go away and it didn't go away for at least two weeks. So all those girls that brought your skinny jeans in your hospital bags, which I'm sure there are zero of you guys, um, put those away because you won't be able to fit in those for quite some time. Number two, your baby will go home in diapers and so will you. Originally I wanted to have the baby at home and I guess it would have happened anyways where I would have had to wear diapers. They're actually not diapers, they're really really big thick pads. Like really really big. This is what the hospital gave me to take with me. They're huge. Look how it's bigger than my face. And this would only go to the girls who had your baby vaginally. Whether it was regular vaginally, where they had to snip it vaginally, you will have to go home with a lot of pads. Um, if you had a cesarean, you're actually going to have to go home with a bulk of pads for your stomach, which that's another story that my friend told me. I'm not going to include it in this one. You're going to go home with a pack of these, and you're probably going to have to buy more. Um, I just went and got like really thick nighttime period pads. For me, I had my baby vaginally, but they did have to little, do a little snip snip, so they gave me this like pain relieving spray that I would have to spray on my stuff. And um, they also give you these witch hazel pads, which you put on the pad. You make what they call like a little salami sandwich. You put these little pads on here, and then you put this in your underwear. It's actually not your underwear. They give you like mesh panties, which actually is better. You like you don't really want tight underwear when you have the whole shebang on. Number three, they come in to massage your stomach, and it's actually not a massage. This is a uterine massage. They're coming to check how your uterus is doing because it's supposed to go from this size all the way down to this mm. size. And when they come to do this massage, oh my gosh, it hurt so much. I was scared every time the nurse came by and just hoping that she wouldn't come to do that massage. Oh, it actually wasn't the nurse, it was the doctor. He would just come and and just do this whole thing and be like, ah, oh, it hurts so much. And even after with my midwife appointments, they would have to do that too, just to see if everything was okay. And man, those massages were not comfortable. Number four, you might not produce milk. You will probably not be able to produce milk for your baby for maybe two days. Yes, this is something that I thought I read about, I thought I knew everything about, and it somehow freaked me out because for me, I wasn't able to produce milk right away. Plus, he wasn't able to latch because of my flat nipples. And I was really, really scared. I was like, oh my gosh, my baby's not going to eat for a couple days. But it's a normal thing. And within those two days, your milk will come through. Um, you might need help. You might need to massage it. You might need to pump it, whatever. You can actually prep your boobs before you go into labor and help pump or whatnot maybe a week before. I wish someone had told me because I really freaked out for a second and I had to google it and calm myself down because I was like what's wrong with me? Why am I? Where's my milk? Why can't I produce? And it actually got me really sad and disappointed at myself which I shouldn't be because this is just a normal thing and your body's just getting ready to do what it needs to do for your little baby. Number five, hemorrhoids and the fear of pooping. I have never 
had hemorrhoids, never really thought about it, but you know what? It might happen to you. With all that pushing, you don't know really, especially if you have an epidural or, or anything that's like numbing you from the pain, you will not really feel what is going on under down there and by the time you're done you your little butthole might have you know <laughs> hemorrhoids is a thing that uh that was new to me and it's very very common you're going to be afraid to poop for a while i was terrified i don't know why i couldn't poo or pee for i couldn't pee for the next day or so and i couldn't I was just scared to go number two for a while because of everything that had happened down there. Day two, the day after I gave birth to my son, the nurse came in and said, have you gone pee? And I said, no. And she's like, well, can you go and try to pee? I sat down on the toilet. I thought I could pee. I was drinking so much water and juice, sat down on that toilet and I could not do it. I was so scared to let go for some reason that uh, she actually had to come back and put a catheter in me and I totally regret, it's just like the worst feeling ever. I don't know why I couldn't pee, I just, I think I just need to relax. So day number two, just take it really easy and just let all your bodily fluids just go out of you without overthinking it. Now for pooing, I think it's just a combination with the hemorrhoids or of the stitching or whatever it is that's going down there and your uterus, everything around your stomach. Um, it's just really uncomfortable and you're probably going to be sitting in the toilet for like 30 minutes, maybe more. <laughs> just trying to figure out like what is going on, why am I not doing this, how do I wipe, wiping. For a few days, this little guy is going to be your best friend. Inside, they give you some liquids to put inside um, with warm water, or you can just do warm water. But to clean yourself, especially if you've had yourself stitched up, um, you just kind of spray it. Like after you've done your thing, you, you spray it and then you tap your private parts dry. You don't want to... You just... And tap. They call this a peri bottle and it's normally used for cleaning, especially if you have stitches. Don't worry, this is a brand new one. I've never used it before. By the way, because of your whole situation down there, you're going to be using one of these pads for at least six to eight weeks. So stock up. For number six, it's probably going to be your favorite one because by month three, you will probably forget almost all of this ever happened and you might even want another baby. It's true, you guys. So for me, after I had little Everest, for the first, oh, I would say month or so, it was just really hard to do things because of the... It's not really painful, but if the whole situation downstairs is just really uncomfortable. Moving around is uncomfortable. Getting out of bed is uncomfortable. You don't really want to be stretching, picking up heavy things. It wasn't a fun time at all, but everyone goes through it and then everyone recovers from it, which is really amazing if you think about it. So you have all this pain, but in between you're going through motherhood and you know trying to figure out your baby's schedule and what your baby likes and taking care of yourself. So while all these things kind of pile up, everything that happened after labor just kind of goes away. And then after a while you're like, yeah, I could probably do it again. And that's how mothers do it, I guess, because after a few months, you just want another. It's really weird. It's not for all moms, I'm sure, because I have friends who only want one child. But for, for most, I would say, after you've had your child for six months or so, you probably might even want another. So everyone who is about to have a baby, please do not be scared or frightened. Everything is going to be okay. All mothers go through this. Some are better, some are worse. But as soon as you hold your brand new newborn in your arms you will just forget about everything it's the most magical thing ever and congratulations and all the mothers that have been through this am i right seriously you guys this is like the biggest best joy in life ever hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't thumbs up if you liked it and we will see you guys very very soon all right bye Good morning! Hi 
everyone! So usually around 8 o'clock or so, this little guy wakes up and just kind of lay around in the bed. I nurse him while I'm still lying down, 